Hello, my dear students. Today, I'll talk about the nervous system anatomy. This is first lecture of the nervous system anatomy. So, I'll talk about the basic and the fundamental concepts. These basic and fundamental concepts are very much crucial and are important for all the medical and the paramedical students. And you will use these concepts in learning your neuroanatomy and in learning your cross anatomy nerve supplies as well. So, first of all, I'll talk about the nervous system basic functioning. How the information is perceived and traveled to the central nervous system and how the orders are sent to the effectors of the nervous system. After that, I'll talk about the basic categories of the receptors and effectors that are involved in the function of the nervous system. After that, I'll demonstrate what is the central nervous system and what is the peripheral nervous system. What are the differences between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system? And after that, I will introduce you to the brain parts, forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and inside cavities and channels that contain the cerebrospinal fluid. And in the end, I will talk about the neuronal cell body collection in the different parts of the brain, in the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system. The collection of the neuronal cell body is named gray matter, is named nuclei, and is named the ganglion. I will talk about all these terms and we will discuss what is the difference between a false ganglia and a true ganglia. So listen carefully and we will start our lecture now. So first of all, basic functioning of the nervous system. Look at this diagram. Here we have got the brain and the spinal cord. That is the central nervous system. Here we have got the skin which has got the receptors and here we have got the skeletal muscle which is an effector. The simple functioning of the nervous system will start through a stimulus. Stimulus is a change in the environment that is detected by the receptors. The change can be temperature, pain and touch. The receptors will receive the information and will deliver it to the central nervous system via the afferent neurons. The job of the CNS is to analyze, interpret and decide about the response. That information is delivered to the effectors via the efferent neurons. And then effectors will generate a response. So this is a simple functioning of the nervous system. I repeat, first of all, we have got a stimulus that will activate the receptors and receptor will deliver the information to the central nervous system via the afferent neurons or the ascending neurons or the sensory neurons. CNS will interpret, will decide about the response and information will travel to the effectors via the efferent neurons or the descending neurons or the motor neurons and effectors will generate a response in the end. This simple basic functioning of the central nervous system is very much crucial for understanding the advanced concepts I will talk about in my upcoming lectures. Let me elaborate further and quickly. First of all, we have got a stimulus. That is perceived by the receptor. Receptor will send the information to the central nervous system via the afferent neurons. CNS will decide about the response and will deliver it to the effector. And effector will produce a response. The receptor has got two broader classifications exterior receptors and the interior receptors. Exterior receptors are for the external environment and these receptors are mainly present inside the skin. Interior receptors provide us information about the internal environment and they are mainly present in the mucosa of the tube systems like the gut, respiratory tract and the genital urinary tract. Likewise, the effectors are broadly classified into two categories, voluntary effectors and the involuntary effectors. The voluntary effectors include skeletal muscle 
and involuntary factors include smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and the glands. The voluntary factors are in our control while the involuntary factors are not in our control. This is very important. So I will repeat that receptors have got two categories. One is exterior receptor that is in our awareness and other is the interior receptors from the visceral that is not in our awareness. Likewise in the effectors we have got two categories. Voluntary factors the response is in our consciousness and the involuntary factors smooth muscle cardiac muscle and gland the response is not in our control not in our consciousness i'll use these four categories when i'll talk about the spinal cord components so remember these four categories look at here this diagram shows us the parts of the nervous system it consists of brain spinal cord the ganglions and the peripheral nerves along with the plexus. The nervous system is divided into a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system. How you will make a simple concept what is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So listen carefully. So the parts of the nervous system which are present in the bony cages like skull and the vertebral column. In the skull we have got the brain and in the vertebral column we have got the spinal cord. Brain and spinal cord are going to form the central nervous system. Every other structure that is outside brain or outside the spinal cord, whether the ganglions, whether the peripheral nerves, whether the cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, and the lumbosacral plexus, all these structures will come under the peripheral nervous system. Now look at here. This diagram shows us the brain and the spinal cord. This is the central nervous system. Brain and spinal cord, that's it. Every other neuronal structure that is not the brain and the spinal cord, that is outside brain and the spinal cord, whether the peripheral nerves, whether the intercostal nerves, whether the cervical and the brachial plexus, lumbar plexus, and the lumbofactor plexus, whether the neuronal cell bodies outside the CNS, these are the ganglions. All these structures will be labeled as the peripheral nervous system. Now I'll brief you, I will provide you an overview about the parts of the brain, the simple nomenclature. The brain has got three divisions. Number one, the forebrain. Number two, the midbrain. And number three, the hindbrain. Forebrain is known as the prosencephalon. Midbrain is known as the mesencephalon. And hindbrain is known as the rhombencephalon. The prosencephalon, the forebrain, has got two parts that is the telencephalon and the diencephalon. Telencephalon, I'll show you, is the cerebral hemisphere, and diencephalon is the central replaced nuclei. Rhombencephalon has got two categories the metencephalon that is the bones and the melencephalon that is the medulla oblongata so note down these basic terms brain has got three parts forebrain midbrain and the hindbrain forebrain is the prosencephalon midbrain is the mesencephalon hindbrain is the rhombencephalon Let me draw a simple sketch to show you all these parts of the brain. First of all, the forebrain that consists of cerebral hemisphere and in the center it has got the nuclei known as the diencephalon which consists of thalamus, hypothalamus, metathalamus and the epithalamus. So this is the forebrain also known as the prosencephalon. It has got two parts, the cerebral hemisphere known as the telencephalon 
and in the center we have got the diencephalon. This is the forebrain. After the forebrain, we will have the midbrain. This midbrain is known as the mesencephalon. After the midbrain, we have got the hindbrain that consists of pons and the medulla oblongata. Pons is known as the metencephalon. And medulla is known as the melencephalon. After the medulla oblongata, we will have the spinal cord. The spinal cord also has got a special name that is the melon. Now I show you that in the center of all these parts, we have got the brain fluid that is the cerebrospinal fluid in cavities and channels. Each part will have a cavity or a channel for the circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid. Let me show you. In the telencephalon, we've got the lateral ventricles. And in the diencephalon, they continue as the third ventricle. In the midbrain, they will form a channel that is known as the cerebral aqueduct. And in the pons and the medulla, they will dilate to form the fourth ventricle. After the fourth ventricle, this cerebrospinal fluid will move to the spinal cord in the central canal. So let me label these parts of the ventricular system which has got the cerebrospinal fluid. This is the lateral ventricle that is the cavity of the cerebral hemisphere telencephalon. This is the third ventricle that is the cavity of the diencephalon. This is the cerebral aqueduct that is the channel of the midbrain. This is the fourth ventricle that is the ventricle of pons and medulla. And in the spinal cord, in the melon, the ventricular system will continue as the central canal in the center of the spinal cord, gray matter. So note down all these terminologies, all this information. I'll show you in some more diagrams now. Now look at this diagram. This diagram shows us the parts of the brain, forebrain, prosencephalon, midbrain, mesencephalon, hindbrain, rhombencephalon. Forebrain has got telencephalon, cerebral hemispheres, and the diencephalon. Rhombencephalon has got metencephalon and the melencephalon. Metencephalon is the bones and the cerebellum. While the melencephalon is the medulla oblongata. In all the parts, we have got cavities and channels for the circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid. In the forebrain or the lateral aspects, we have got the two lateral ventricles. And in the diencephalon, here we have got the third ventricle. And in the midbrain, here we have got a narrow channel that is known as the cerebral aqueduct. Okay, and after the cerebral aqueduct, the cerebrospinal fluid will reach the fourth ventricle that is bounded by the bones, cerebellum, and the medulla. In the end, the CSF will move down to the spinal cord in the central canal. This is the central canal inside the spinal cord. Now look at the diagram of the agile brain having the parts of the ventricular system in different parts of the brain. These are the lateral ventricles, two lateral ventricles and two cerebral hemispheres that is the telencephalon. This one here is the third ventricle that is the cavity of the diencephalon. This is the cerebral aqueduct which is the cavity of the midbrain. Mesencephalon. After cerebral aqueduct, this is the fourth ventricle. That is the cavity of the rhombencephalon, which has got the pons, the spherebellum, and the medulla. And last, here we have got the central canal that is present inside the spinal cord. So, this is about the introduction of the parts of the central nervous system and inside channels of the ventricular system.
Now look at these two diagrams showing us the parts that form the hindbrain and the parts that form the brain stem. There is very little difference between these two terms, but you should know what is the difference. The hindbrain is formed by pons, medulla, and the cerebellum. These three structures will form the hindbrain and they are grouped together because embryologically they are formed from one brain vesicle that is the rhombencephalon. So they are grouped because of their development. And now the brainstem. Brainstem consists of midbrain, pons, and medulla. There is no cerebellum in the brainstem. These three parts are grouped together and are named as brainstem because of the common characteristics. Brainstem connects the brain with the spinal cord, number one. Number two, this brainstem that has got midbrain, pons, and medulla, it has got the cranial nerve nuclei and it has got the cardiorespiratory centers. So brainstem is about the parts functioning together and hindbrain is about the parts developed together. Look at here, this is the neuron in our cell that is the basic structural and the functional unit of the nervous system. It has got a body and then it has got fibers, long fiber known as the axon and short fibers. These are the short fibers that are known as the dendrites. This neuronal cell body is present in the form of aggregates or collection in the central nervous system and in the peripheral nervous system. The collection of the cell body in the central nervous system is named as nuclei or the gray matter. And in the peripheral nervous system, the collection of the neuronal cell bodies is known as the ganglia. I will brief you about this concept of the neuronal cell body collection named as nuclei, named as gray matter and named as the ganglia. Look at here. This is the coronal cut section of the brain showing us its different part. At the top, this is the cerebral hemisphere known as the telencephalon part of forebrain. In the center here, we have got the diencephalon. Beneath diencephalon here, we have got the midbrain. Beneath midbrain, here we have got the pons. Beneath the pons, here we have got the medulla. Midbrain, pons and medulla together called as the brainstem that continue into the spinal cord. So beneath is the spinal cord. Now, what is the pattern of the neuronal cell body in these areas? In the cerebral hemisphere, we have got the gray matter at the periphery. This hole at the periphery is the gray matter. That is the collection of the neuronal cell body. Breathe gray matter, we have got the white matter. So the gray matter is the collection of neuronal cell bodies. And white matter is the bundles of the neurons, fibers. In the diencephalon here, we have got thalamus, metathalamus, epithalamus, and subthalamus. All these are the collection of the nuclei. Here, the neuronal cell body collection is known as the nuclei. Beneath diencephalon, we have got the brain stem, that is the midbrain, pons, medulla. Here, we have got collection of the neuronal cell body in the form of the nuclei. And these nuclei are actually the nuclei of the cranial nerves. So in the brainstem, whenever we have collection of the neural cell bodies, it will be in the form of the nuclei. In the cerebellum, if we take the cut section of the cerebellum, we will have again a gray matter at the periphery that is the neuronal cell body and white matter in the center. In the white matter of the cerebellum, again we have got collection of the neuronal cell bodies. These are buried nuclei, deep nuclei of the cerebellum. So cerebellum has got gray matter at the periphery. In the center, it's the white matter, but inside white matter, there are deep nuclei of the cerebellum. And now the spinal cord, that is also the part of the central nervous system, along with the brain. In this cut section, you can see that gray matter is now in the center. It's not on the periphery. And over the periphery, we have got the white matter. 
gray matter is in the shape of the H and in this shape gray matter is arranged in the form of horns over the posterior aspect and over the anterior aspect these are the tarsal horns that are pure sensory having the cell bodies of the sensory neurons here over the front these are the ventral horns or the motor horns because here we have got neuronal cell bodies of motor neurons so in this panel called the cell body collection is in the center in the form of dorsal horn and the ventral horn now look at here this is the cut section of the cerebral hemisphere and this is the cut section of the cerebellum in the cerebral hemisphere cut section over the periphery margins we have got the gray matter for the margins this is the gray matter and in the center we have got the white matter in the center of the white matter again we have got the collection of the nuclei known as the diencephalon similar is the anatomy of the cerebellum over the margins we have got the gray matter this is the gray matter of the cerebellum and inside gray matter this is the white matter we have got the white matter inside the gray matter in the cerebellum and inside the white matter there are buried nuclei look at here these are the buried nuclei the deep nuclei of the cerebellum so in this way we can say that cerebral hemisphere and cerebellum has got same arrangement of the neurons now look at here this is a diagram of the brain stem showing us the midbrain pons and the medulla and you can see that neuronal cell bodies are present inside the brain stem these are the cell body of the cranial nerve nuclei in the brain stem and from here the axon will come out and will approach the target so simply in the brain stem neuronal cell body collection is known as the nuclei Now I will demonstrate the neuronal cell body collection outside the central nervous system that is the peripheral nervous system. The neuronal cell body collection outside the central nervous system is known as the ganglia. The ganglia can be a false ganglia or it can be a true ganglia. False ganglia is also known as the pseudo ganglia. But what is the difference between a false ganglia and a true ganglia? Look at here. We have got a neuron which has got a cell body in the center with two processes. This kind of neuron is known as the pseudo unipolar neuron. Another category of the neuron is like this cell body at one pole and an axon on other pole. So when we will have collection of this kind of neuronal cell bodies like this we will say that we have got a collection of the neuronal cell body so this is a ganglia and in this category we will have a synapse at the level of the cell body like this this neuron will synapse with another neuron and here we will have collection of the neuronal cell body that will synapse with another neuron we will have a collection of the neuronal cell body that will synapse with another neuron so this is also a collection of the neuronal cell body but what is the difference between uh, this category of collection and this category of the collection the difference is very much obvious here we have got only the neuronal cell body but here we have got neuronal cell body with synapse so neuronal cell body collection without synapse is known as the false ganglia and neuronal cell body collection with synapse is known as the true ganglia i'll demonstrate these two kind of ganglia in this diagram look at here here we got the neuronal cell body which has got two fibers a peripheral fiber that is coming from a receptor and a central process that goes to the central nervous system and synapse with another neuron that will reach the destination
now we will have neuronal cell body collection at this location and this will be a ganglia this will be a pseudo ganglia and this location is note down this location is dorsal root so the pseudo ganglia false ganglia is also named as dorsal root ganglia because in the spinal cord its location is fixed it's always present in the dorsal root and now the true ganglia true ganglia belongs to the visceral nervous system visual nervous system is also known as the autonomic nervous system and true ganglia belongs to the autonomic nervous system motor part i will explain in my upcoming videos but now just remember that true ganglia belongs to the autonomic nervous system motor division which has got two parts sympathetic and parasympathetic and true ganglia belongs to this family visual nervous system is for the visceras and for supplying the visceras we have two neurons first neuron is in the lateral gray horn of the spinal cord the axon of this neuronal cell body will move out of the spinal cord it means it will move out of the central nervous system and it will synapse with the second neuron and then second neuron will reach the target will reach the destination so we will have a neuronal cell body collection here outside the central nervous system and this neuronal cell body collection is with synapse and we will say that this is the true ganglia so this is about the neuronal cell body collection outside the central nervous system outside the spinal cord now i will talk about the neuronal cell body collection outside the brain look at here this is the brain stem which has got the neuronal cell bodies and we name these as the nuclei so first i'll talk about the false or the pseudo ganglia this is similar to the ganglia i have already described again in the head and face area we have got sensations and for that sensory purpose we will have a neuron that will have a cell body here and it will have a peripheral process that is coming from the receptor and it has got a central process that will move inside the brain stem it will synapse with another neuron that will move towards the destination so here we will have a collection of the neuronal cell body and this collection is without synapse so this is the false ganglia and in the head and face area we have got visera yes we have got the smooth muscle and the glands here for supplying this visera its axon will come out of the brain will come out of the cns it will synapse outside the cns with a second neuron and second neuron will reach the destination will reach the visera so here we will have collection of the neuronal cell body this collection is with synapse so we'll name this collection as the true ganglia so note down false ganglia always belongs to the sensory division of the nervous system and true ganglia belongs to the motor division of the visceral nervous system also known as the autonomic nervous system